Top of the morning, everybody. Sean Astrom here. Today I have a little quick tip, redshift thingamabob I wanted to share. There's been some chitter chatter about some of the limitations on the new nodes in that you can't use Cinema 4D's uh, native shaders, but you in fact can. And I'm gonna show you in this video how to do it. So I'm just hopping over to Cinema here and this is Cinema 4D 2023. And this is just a little trusty uh, shader scene I use when developing uh, materials and whatnot. And uh, I thought I would demonstrate inside of here. But as you can see, I have my node editor dock down here. And this is the new node editor. And that's kind of what I wanted to show is that you can uh, use this uh, and it works great. And yeah, so if I fire up my render view here, you can see in uh, 2023, we get uh, really nice uh, feedback as well, like uh, when when dialing in uh, shaders and whatnot. For a while, that was a little sluggish, um, but it seems to be kind of resolved in 2023, which is super duper great. Um, but yeah, so first thing I will do here is uh, we need to go into our preferences here and I wanted to point out a couple settings that you should be aware of uh, when you're inside of Redshift and the new version of Cinema. Um, there is this option here node materials for presets and currently I have that checked and all that does is if I go up here and go create Redshift material let's say I want to create a new standard material by default it's going to create that as a new node material and just just so you're clear uh, these are the new nodes in that they use Cinema's new node architecture um, as opposed to the old Espresso style uh, UX from the previous materials. Um, but if we just uh, uncheck this and I go create Redshift material and I go standard, um, you'll see now, um, so I have two here. I have this first one, which is using the new nodes, and then this second one here which is using the old nodes and if I hit edit shader graph you can see that brings up the old espresso nodes here um, so in this case though I, I actually do want access to this so that's why I wanted to point out that you should just be aware of this checkbox here another thing I would recommend uh, changing when working with materials and shaders in Redshift is uh, under material previews here make sure and set this to when render is idle and that's just going to ensure that while your IPR is active it's not over here trying to render these material previews which can definitely sometimes slow it down so I would just say set this to when render is when renderer rather is idle so uh, so anyhow uh, with with what I wanted to show here all we need to do is we need to bring in the old redshift render view graph and we need to bring in a C4D shader and this is sort of a link to the classic Cinema 4D shaders which you can find in here under effects and surfaces and all these wonderful things but one that I used to use quite quite often is the uh, tiles shader um, and we can essentially plug that right into this output here Actually, I take that back. We need to add a texture node first, and we need to plug that here into general image text zero, and then we need to plug this guy right into the output. So we're just gonna bypass the material altogether, and you can see now that this shader is being output here with the material preview, and that's all well and good. And for fun, let's go in here and just change some colors real quick sure why not and another thing to point out is by default the these are the texture uh, resolution uh, dimensions right here and by default you can see it's pretty low 128 by 128 pixels that's extremely low so uh, let's just bump this up to 1024 by 1024 that works and then of course you can also change the bit depth here which is something to be aware of but uh, for now we can just keep it at 8 bit and now, so we have this, so we can just rename this classic material here. Uh, let's just say C4D shader. And then in my new node here, which is right here still, 
uh, and we can just check that by changing the colors and yep, that's the one. Um, so I can double click here in the new node layout and I can type in reference or start to type in that. And what I want is this utility here. So with this reference node, you'll notice that there is a material slot here in the attribute manager where I can simply drag this classic C4D shader and then I can plug it right into the color here. And just like that, you can see that now I'm bringing in this classic Cinema 4D texture inside a new node here. So if I fire up my render view and actually apply this here to the model, you can see that I'm getting that shader. Um, now I'm not getting a preview here in the viewport, but that's okay because it's kind of, I don't think, I think that's one of the limitations is it's not really looking at that in the new um, renderer or viewport rendering engine rather. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty sweet workflow. I can always go back to this uh, shader here and start to make changes. I can, let me fire up the render view and I can get in here and make changes. And you can see that that shader is working fine. I can change it to a uh, brick, you know, all the different fun stuff that you get in here. Um, and yeah, guys, I just wanted to point out how you can still use the classic Cinema 4D shaders with inside of the new nodes here inside of Cinema, just through this magical reference node. Hope that was helpful for some of you out there in the world. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for checking this out. Talk to you all later.